Hello, in this video, we're going to review a few NJ SLAM questions on adding and subtracting fractions. The first question we have here is it says, which expression shows a possible first step in the process for finding the sum of 3 eighths and 5 thirds? Now, the first thing I want you to focus on is notice it's saying the first step. It's not asking you to solve this whole problem. Yes, you're welcome to, but if you're crunched for some time, you might not want to work on solving the entire problem. Now, it also says finding the sum. Sum is a keyword for addition. So now I'm going to write 3 eighths and 5 thirds. Now we are adding these together. Now, first thing I notice is my denominators are not the same. They're 3 and 8. So on the side, I might need to write out my denominators and write out all my multiples to determine what my least common multiple is, which is going to be also used as my least common denominator. Now, looking at my answer choices, you can also use this to help you. Now, looking at 11, is 11 possible? 24? I don't know. Let's see. So now we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. 18, 21, 24, and we have 8, 16, 24. So right away we determined that 24 is going to be used as my least common denominator. Now, my next step is to determine what will be my numerator. Now, I see here 8 times 3 is 24, and 3 times 3 is 9. Now here I'm going to do 3 times 8 is 24, so 5 times 8 happens to be 40. Now, notice the first step. You don't have to continue adding. Yes, you would get 49 24ths if you finish this problem, which is totally fine. However, let's look at my answer choices and see if I could select one of the answers. Now, looking at my work here, I know right away 24 needs to be my denominator. So I can eliminate option A and C. Now, option B is telling me I'm going to add 24 plus 24. Do we ever add my denominators together when I'm adding or subtracting fractions? I don't think so. So the only option is D as my correct answer. And to confirm that that is absolutely correct, notice on my work, I have 9 as my numerator and 40 as my numerator, which if we were to continue solving, we would do 9 plus 40. Therefore, D is your correct answer. This problem here says an art teacher paints part of a wall in her classroom. She paints the top two-fifths of the wall blue and the bottom one-sixth of the wall green. She does not paint the rest of the wall. What fraction of the wall does the teacher paint? So what fraction of this wall does she paint? Well, two-fifths of the wall is blue. That's the top part. And we have one-sixth of the wall is green, which is the bottom. So she only paints two-fifths of the wall and one-sixth. So to find the total amount that the teachers painted, we do need to add these together. Now looking here, we have five and six as my denominators. Let's start listing out my multiples. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Here I have six, 12, 18, 24, 30. This is great. 30, in fact, is gonna be my least common multiple. So now let's see. We know that 30 is going to be my least common denominator throughout this entire problem. And notice here we have 15 and 11 as denominators as answer choices. Well, right away I can eliminate those. So it's either going to be 11 thirtieths or 17 thirtieths. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my denominators. Well, 5 times 6 is 30, so 2 times 6 is 12. Now I have 6 times 5 is 30, and 1 times 5 is 5. And last but least, I'm going to add my numerators. 12 plus 5 gives me 17 thirtieths. So notice here, my final answer is going to be D, which is 17 thirtieths. But notice to solve this problem, you had to write this work out. This is a time where you take out that scrap paper and you begin rewriting these important fractions and determining am I adding, subtracting, find my least common denominator, and then add them together. You need to show this work to determine what the correct answer would have been. So 
So for this problem here, it says Josh biked one and one third miles to school. Tally biked one half mile to school. Fraction strip diagram below can be used to find how many more miles Josh biked than Callie. So in this question here, it says, how many more miles did Josh bike than Callie? Now this is part A, and you're gonna see the next slide is gonna have part B. Several of these questions with the diagram, oftentimes you'll have part A, part B, part C, part D, and you're always referring back to the same diagram to help you. Now looking at each of these diagrams, I see I have one hole and another hole. Now look at how they broke this hole up. They broke it into one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces. So six equal pieces. And I notice here Josh biked for one and one third miles to school. Callie biked one half. So if I wanted to write or draw in one and one third or one half, well, I notice that they're not in six, but I notice here one and one third could also be written with a denominator of six. So if I multiply my denominator by two and my numerator by two, I get one and two sixths. And one half is also equivalent to three sixths, or two times three is six, one times three is three. Now I can easily shade in how much Josh and Callie bite. But notice here they're asking how many more miles did Josh and Callie bike? So what you're going to do is you are going to be subtracting. Now some of you on the side of your paper might start subtracting. You might see two minus three, we can't do that. We're gonna borrow and that's fine. But I encourage you to use the diagram to help you solve this problem. It's given to you anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade in Josh's amount. One and two six. So notice one whole one and well two six one two. So notice this represents two six is my one whole. So in blue is what Josh bike. But it's asking me how many more miles did Josh bike than Callie. Now we're gonna take away what Callie would bike. Callie would bike three six. So I'm gonna take away one six, two six, three six. Now notice what's left is going to be my answer choice. So what's left is one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six. So the answer to this question, how many more miles did Josh bike than Callie? Well, five, six mile. So notice that is my answer to this question. And notice how I use this model to help me determine the final answer. Now, if you chose to borrow solve this problem, you would still get five, six, and that's fine. If you're given this model, use it to help you. In fact, this model even helped me determine my denominator I'm gonna be using for this problem. So I encourage you to always use that to help you. Now, this is going to be part B of this question. Now, notice here it's asking something different. The same model is here. What is the total number of miles that Josh and Callie bike together? So we learned here, and I'm going to use the same work I already did. Josh biked one and two sixths. Callie, as we have here, biked three sixths miles. So now notice here, all together, that's my keyword for adding. Well, yes, you could add on the side and that's fine, but you might as well use the visual model that's given to you. Let's shade in Josh in blue, just like we had in the last problem. We learned in the last problem, Josh has one full rectangle shaded in for one hole and one six, two six. Now in red this time, instead of crossing out pieces of this problem, I'm going to add in pieces of this problem. So Kelly has three six, so we have one six, two six, three six. Now they wanted to find all together or the total, the sum. So we're gonna add everything together. This entire piece here is going to tell me how much Josh and Callie biked. So now we have one whole and we have one six, two six, three six, four six, five six. So together they biked one and five six miles to school. Now, each 
those to write this on the side and you added, you would get the same answer as well. But again, you might as well use the visual model given to you. Now you would have also had all the work from the previous problem too to help you. You already determined my least common denominator. You already started using the visual model. You're just gonna continue using it for part B of the problem. In this problem here, we have Stella, Aaron, and Don use ribbon to decorate a room. Stella uses five sixths yard of ribbon. Aaron uses two thirds yard of ribbon, and Don uses three fourths yard of ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an S for Stella, which is five sixths, an A for Aaron, which is two thirds, and Don a G for Don is three fourths. Part A. What is the total number of yards of ribbon Stella, Aaron, and Don use? Enter your answer as a fraction in the boxes. Total, we're adding. We're adding three different fractions together, all with different denominators. But that's absolutely fine. We're going to do just like we've always done and find the least common denominator. I'm going to write three, four, and six on the side of my paper. I'm going to start writing out the multiples. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Here I have 4, 8, 12, 16. Now I have 6, 12, and I stop there because I notice we have 12 as a multiple for 3, 4, and 6. So that's telling me that my denominator is going to be 12. So my goal is to change all three of these fractions and find an equivalent fraction to each of these that have a denominator of 12. So now looking here, I have 6 times 2. 2 is 12, so I multiply my denominator by 2. I multiply my numerator by 2 to create an equivalent fraction. 5 times 2 is 10, giving me 10 twelfths to represent Stella's amount of ribbon that she has. 2 thirds, I have 3 times 4 is 12, and 2 times 4 is 8, giving me a new fraction to represent the amount that Aaron has. And finally, we have on 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. Now, notice these three amounts represent each Stella, Aaron, and John. We created equivalent fractions, and now each of their amounts have a denominator of 12, which means I can now add or subtract. Now, part A again says, what is the total number of yards of ribbon Stella, Aaron, and John use? So now we have Stella has 10 twelfths, Aaron has 8 twelfths, and Don has 9 twelfths. So now I notice all the same denominator. I'm going to add my numerators. So 10 plus 8 is 18, 18 plus 9 is 27. Now, 27 twelfths is in fact an improper fraction. You can change that to a mixed number, but I notice my answer only gave me two boxes. One for a numerator, one for a denominator. There's no spot for a whole number in mixed number. So therefore, this is telling you you need to leave your answer as an improper fraction. So my answer here is just 27 twelfths, and that's all you have to do. Now, I'm going to leave this information on my piece of scrap paper that I did, and I'm going to use this information for part B. <clears throat> says, how many more yards of ribbon did Stella use than Aaron? So I'm comparing Stella and Aaron. I'm not doing anything with Don. I can still use Stella and Aaron's information from part A. So Stella has 10 twelfths and Aaron has 8 twelfths. We're comparing, we're subtracting. So 10 twelfths minus 8 twelfths. We are left with 2 twelfths. Now, Enter your answer as a fraction in the boxes. Notice we have a proper fraction. We're writing two twelfths as my answer, and you are finished. I have to take this solution, and don't forget to put it in where it says enter your answer as a fraction in the boxes. Now, these are great questions that I recommend that you practice and try out on your own. You can always rewatch this video to check your answers as you try these on your own see if you can do them independently. As always, this video is posted on my YouTube channel and I encourage you to watch it at any time to help you solve these problems.